Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World, an interview program that invites various guests for a conversation on important themes. And today we have in our studio a guest from Belgium, international banker with more than 40 years experience, published author, Mr. Eric Rissabel. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice Th to meet you. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. Eric Versevel is an international banker with more than 40 years of experience. For the last 30 years, he maintained international roles as country head in Indonesia, South Korea, China and Ukraine, where he managed highly competitive and diverse teams of 200 employees. In 2000, he founded Benelux Business Association in China. Then he established and chaired Amcham's Financial Services Committee in Mongolia co-founded the European Chamber of Commerce in Ulaanbaatar and published multiple documents on the financial industry. In 2009, Eric Recival was made a Knight in the Order of the Crown by the Belgian government and in 2019 he was appointed as Honorary Consul for Belgium to Mongolia. He recently launched his book Mongolia Cracks in the Eternal Blue Sky. I have seen your recent vlog on the internet and uh, I learned that you have moved to Mongolia in 2016. Yes. And let's begin our interview. What made you decide to move here? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question, of course, to start how I ended up in, in Mongolia, in, mm -hmm. as you say, in 2016. Um, in, in fact, my, my whole international <coughs> career uh, in banking has been in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had been posted in Ukraine for five years. Mm -hmm. uh, that was before the before the official war. And then uh, we had an opportunity in my in my bank, in, which is a large uh, European bank, international bank. We had an opportunity to to continue the office that we have here, that mm -hmm. we have had here in uh, in in Ulaanbaatar. Mm -hmm. And I I volunteered for that, and I was very happy that we mm -hmm. could move here. Mm -hmm. And we had a great experience. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, you have just mentioned that you have worked in various countries uh, for more than like 30 years in South Korea, Ukraine. And um, comparing like work environment of these countries to Mongolia, uh, what is the difference? What makes the Mongolia stand out from all these countries? Um, let me first say that um, in fact, many countries have in common that it is not so easy to find the best way to develop economically mm -hmm. and to become socially inclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, every country faces its own problems and its own challenges in, in realizing its, its potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is the most common characteristic that I have identified over my, my career in, in banking for such, a, for such a long time. Mm -hmm. In Mongolia, it is... Uh, easy to say that the development challenges come from the outside, mm -hmm. come from outside Mongolia, come mm -hmm. from China, or from Russia, or from the dollar, or from the commodity prices. But in my view, a lot of things can actually uh, happen locally, and uh, governments and the people can, can actually contribute to, to making a development more socially inclusive and more, more diverse. Uh, instead of trying to find the problems outside the borders of the country. Okay. Uh, what, where Mongolia stands out, I think, is in its enormous potential, mm -hmm. uh, its enormous size and also the quality and the education of, of the people. It is unbelievable to, to see the, the qualifications and the standards that, that especially the young people have. Uh, who have been able to graduate from universities and uh, the quality of, of the work they do is, is absolutely outstanding. You are a published author and uh, you are currently running a project, Life is Good, potentially. Mm. And what is the series about? Yeah, that's mm. a good question as well. Um, as I mentioned in, in, in the beginning, I, throughout my career, I, I just happened to, to, to see how countries struggle mm -hmm. sometimes to, to develop which is why I started thinking in the terms of life is good, life can be good for everyone, potentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many people always talk about the potential of a country, mm -hmm. the potential of countries like Indonesia, of Ukraine, of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. But w what exactly is it that makes a country mm -hmm. eventually successful? Mm -hmm. 
is what inspired me to start this project. Mm -hmm. But it's actually only just one book for now. Mm -hmm. So I have more, more coming up, I, I hope, but I, of course, need to find the time. Mm -hmm. And usually I, I publish uh, after, after I leave the country. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, my, my view may be a bit, a bit not, not so, uh, my, might be a bit biased. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's how I plan to, to proceed for the future as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Talking about your book, we cannot leave uh, without mentioning the recently published book called Life is uh, Mongolia, Cracks in the Eternal Blue yeah. Sky. And what inspired you to write this book? What the book is about? The, the title um, means that it, it's a kind of reflection on the fact that it's easy to mm -hmm. talk about the eternal blue sky and mm -hmm. everything being, being great and blue mm -hmm. and fast and pristine mm -hmm. in the country. But I think it's not sufficient. Uh, we, we, this is not a tourist uh, brochure. Uh, mm -hmm. we, I think for a country to, to understand where it can improve and for people to be better off, uh, I think we need to be prepared to talk about what, what can be done better. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call the cracks mm -hmm. in the system. Uh, continuing our talk about like the what can be done better in the system, uh, you have worked in the European Chamber of Commerce, mm. uh, co-founded the American Chamber of Commerce here operating in Mongolia. As someone working in business and finance environment, mm. uh, what challenges do foreign investors coming to Mongolia yeah. face here in Mongolia? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Solongo. Let me first clarify that um, in, in the American chamber, in Amcham, I, am not, I'm, I did not, uh, was not a founder, mm -hmm. but I, I established the Financial Services mm -hmm. Committee, as, as we call it. And we had very regular meetings mm -hmm. with uh, all the very senior executives of the banking mm -hmm. sector, the insurance sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of interaction with the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. with the Central Bank. And we made recommendations on, mm -hmm. on how uh, we believed uh, the financial sec sector could be made stronger. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was quite successful. Uh, and then the idea came up uh, to establish a European chamber because I'm a European person mm -hmm. and, and I was uh, very happy with that, with that idea mm -hmm. and I supported uh, the, the establishment of, mm -hmm. of that chamber as well. Going to the, the core of your question, um, I, I think uh, Mongolia needs to, it would, would benefit, let's put it like that, I think Mongolia would benefit from finding a better balance mm -hmm. between uh, national interest and foreign investment. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is not; these are not easy subjects. Mm -hmm. But uh, these days, all projects, especially mm -hmm. in mining and in energy, uh, require very large amounts of mm -hmm. capital, which are not necessarily available from the banking sector in the country, mm -hmm. and are also not available from from the debt capital markets or the or the stock markets in the country. So it is essential that there is access to international finance. Mm -hmm. In addition to, of course, the physical investment in foreign direct investment, mm -hmm. as we call it. But access to international finance is also critically important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, a project which costs billions of dollars cannot be financed with local money alone. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the message that we were trying to give to, to the authorities. Uh, and, and I think they, I think, the government understands uh, there are other issues which make it more difficult to implement. And of course, the, 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 the big neighbors uh, who cannot be replaced, mm -hmm. uh, they, they play also a role <coughs> in that. And it's not so simple to mm -hmm. find that balance. Mm -hmm. But basically, that was the message that we were usually mm -hmm. giving to the government. Mm -hmm. And to your opinion, do you think uh, Mongolian business environment is friendly to foreign investors? Let's put it like this. I think foreigners uh, are very welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are always uh, welcomed with open arms and mm -hmm. we get to know each other very, very quickly and very well. Uh, when, it's, when it is about the balance, again, the same, the same issue, the balance of national interest mm -hmm. and how can the country benefit most from investment, mm -hmm. I think there is a little bit of work to do mm -hmm. for, the, for the country. Mm -hmm. um, uh, talking about your previous experiences in uh, American Chamber of Commerce, European Chamber of Commerce, what sectors of business mostly attract uh, foreign investors to Mongolia? 
Uh, at this moment, there is uh, not so much foreign investment outside mining, of mm -hmm. course, uh, but, but even in mining, uh, it is impo the, the, of the, the amounts involved in, in, mine, in international mining are very, very large and, and the, the investments are very big. So even there, uh, the country needs to, needs to be careful to, to continue to attract mm -hmm. foreign investment mm -hmm. in that sector. Yeah? It is the most important sector for the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the country is not, uh, in, is not known or is not, is not, is not established in manufacturing mm -hmm. of automobiles, for example. Or that, mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to play with what we have mm -hmm. as a country. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's mostly mining. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your current assignment to Mongolia? Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, I'm currently based in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. where I still work for the same mm -hmm. European bank. Uh, but I was also, over the last six months, um, I was asked to join uh, the board of a, mm -hmm. of a Mongolian bank as an independent director. And that's why I now have regular visits, mm -hmm. usually every three or four months. Mm -hmm. I, I come to the country and I mm -hmm. see how, how the development goes. And of course, I see uh, also the developments in the banking mm -hmm. sector close up. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that I have found a way to con continue to contribute mm -hmm. to the country and its economic development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from this position. Okay, and what do you do in Sri Lanka? Ah, yeah. Uh, actually, it is the first time that I live in a country not being a banker in itself, so we, mm -hmm. don't, have, we don't have banking clients, because we, our, our bank operates uh, what we can probably best call a, a shared services center, mm -hmm. uh, whereby uh, Sri Lankan people work for our global bank Mm -hmm. in financial analysis, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, credit reviews, mm -hmm. and they do an, an excellent job mm -hmm. in providing these services to our bank, and I run that entity mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. But Sri Lanka is also a country which is potentially mm -hmm. very rich, mm -hmm. but at the, moment, country, yeah. at the moment not doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about more about um, banking and insurance sector in Mongolia? Um, I, will, I will try. I think the 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 strength of the banking or the financial sector in general is that um, they have actually both banking and insurance mm -hmm. sector have continued to uh, let me say do well mm -hmm. i mean they have survived very difficult times mm -hmm. let's put it like that mm -hmm. when when i lived here in 20 from 2016 to 2020 uh, the financial condition of the country was at, mm -hmm. some, at some point very, very, mm -hmm. uh, very, very weak. Mm -hmm. And usually the ba banks and insurance companies suffer extensively mm -hmm. from that. Uh, the discussions with IMF were complicated, but the banks survived. The banks remained liquid. Mm -hmm. The banks remained solvent mm -hmm. and have actually been uh, properly managed in a difficult environment, mm -hmm. which includes uh, high interest rates, mm -hmm. uh, pressure on the currency. Mm -hmm. So. I think in the circumstances, mm -hmm. it's actually quite okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, recent news is like uh, most of uh, Mongolian commercial banks are currently launching their IPOs yes. on the market. And how do you see this trend? Uh, commercial banks launching a few percent of like 10 or 5 percent of their shares to the market, to the public? The, the, the immediate response, of course, is twofold. First of all, it's a very important first mm -hmm. step. Mm -hmm. uh, the second part of that, of the answer is that obviously five or ten percent mm -hmm. is not enough, mm -hmm. but in the market it is the best possible, the best possible objective to have because mm -hmm. the, the domestic market is, is insufficiently mature to accommodate larger percentages, to accommodate larger amounts of money, to mm -hmm. flow into the into the banking sector. Mm -hmm. I think it's also good for the Mongolian people to, to begin to understand mm -hmm. better how stock markets work, mm -hmm. but also what can go wrong mm -hmm. and how they can be exposed to certain risks if share prices go down. Mm -hmm. I think it's also an opportunity for the Mongolian stock market, for the Mongolian stock exchange to continue to develop. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to become, to try and become internationally attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of measures need to be taken to make that possible, to make uh, foreign investment through the stock market, mm -hmm. which is different from that direct investment, also possible mm -hmm. and easy to, to work with. 
Okay, returning back to the talks about your published book, Mongolia, Cracks in the Internal Blue Sky, uh, what is the target audience of your book? I think um, the target audience would probably be the, the young people in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. uh, I think international travelers uh, and international businessmen will also be interested, mm -hmm. but I especially hope that uh, the young generation mm -hmm. will will read it. It is not uh, meant to be critical of Mongolia in mm -hmm. itself, not critical of people in itself. Mm -hmm. But I try to highlight where things can be done better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I try to do that with respect for what exists. Mm -hmm. I am, after all, I've only lived here for mm -hmm. four years, so my knowledge is limited. I'm just mm -hmm. observing mm -hmm. things that I think that can go. So that things that can go better. So I hope the young people will, will read it and mm -hmm. will, will work on uh, on, on making things better. Mm -hmm. I see. And the book is published uh, in English or in Mongolian? Yes, I am grateful for publishing house uh, Monsudar, mm -hmm. who have offered to translate the book into Mongolian. Mm -hmm. So it is now available in the internal bookstores, both mm -hmm. in English and in Mongolian. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm happy that that has become possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for Monsudar to, to help me with that. And uh, you were talking about the series of Project Life mm. is Good, potentially. And what is the next des destination country that you are looking forward to write your book about? Mm. I think my next one will be Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's also, as I mentioned, a potentially very rich country mm -hmm. with, with uh, very highly educated, highly qualified people, mm -hmm. young people. Uh, unfortunately, the situation there is 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 not is not good now, mm -hmm. uh, and the, it's similar to many other countries mm -hmm. where uh, we it is a, a government will try to find external factors mm -hmm. <laughs> to say tourism, COVID. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, that didn't help, but essentially uh, the structure of the economy and how it is managed mm -hmm. uh, needs improvement, mm -hmm. and. And I think that's why it is potentially very rich. And that mm -hmm. will hopefully be my next book. Okay, we would like to wish you good luck in your upcoming you. writing of the book. And thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next time with more stories and more guests.